Hey there. In this video, I'm going to go over a quick update, and that is I just received from Fruto Technologies the amazing little bar graph module. Now, for obvious com er, for comparison, uh, yeah, this is so much more compact. This was previously wedged inside of my uh, pro uh, Neutrona, Neutrona wand, and yeah, that was, I thought that was pretty compact. Yeah, then, so same device, and that is, that is just amazing. Um, it basically uses the exact same chip, that's the, uh, was it the HK, HT16K33, so it's the driver uh, for this device, and we also have some neat little cables, so we can very easily plug this in. And this is all working with the uh, specs for the GP Star PCB. So I'm going to put some stuff out of the way here. There's another part we'll get to in a minute. And what I want to do is <clears throat> show a little bit of the inside of the wand, just what this looks like on mine. So first of all, if you see down here, let me see if I can get this uh, in the light. And okay, tip of the screwdriver right down here. You can see the wire coming out of the handle. So normally there is a piece of plastic here. Um, I've cut into mine and cut it away only to find that basically the reason why it wouldn't come out is that it was glued in there. So I took a Dremel, absolute destroyed this thing. Uh, it's it's It still works, of course, but I'm not happy that I had to go so hard to get that plastic out. Turns out you really don't need to take the entire thing out. There's a bit here that you can cut uh, under the old controller uh, for the HasLab equipment. Once that piece is cut, there's a piece that goes here, which just is um, this here. This is, the, this is the module that holds the spring mechanism that works with the lever to release the barrel. So with that out of the way, you can get access here to the, uh, to the bar graph. So this is this space here is uh, where the bar graph normally will go. I did cut a small bit out of here. There's a piece uh, that comes to a point. I was having trouble routing around that to make the bar graph sit where I wanted it to. This can easily be done with this still in place. So if you have a pair of uh, wire snips or you know, a small knife, you can go at this very carefully and basically just notch out this little corner here. And with that out of the way, I'll show you, I've got a piece of plastic here. This is a 3D printed part. The STL is part of our repository of uh, code and other uh, accessories. And this is perfectly set. So it will be a very tight friction fit in this but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna make a quick fix to this but basically once this uh, once this gets pressed into place this whole thing is meant to fit right down in here let me see if I can do this with my with the camera running yeah so basically that'll it'll just slide right in there and then we just hook up the wires and away we go. So that's it. That's that's all there is to it. Uh, installing the bar graph. Like I said, there is some some bits that you can snip out of here with some uh, wire snips to make room. But otherwise, uh, this should fit perfectly uh, right inside there. Next, we're going to take a quick look at the power cell device. So this is a new one. This is a RGB uh, power cell uh, device that uses, that has 15 LEDs. And notice the size of these LEDs versus the old one. They are more densely packed and they are massive. Um, I've already hooked this up and tested it out. It changes colors. So basically it works with the uh, GP Star hardware so that it will change based on the video game mode. So when you go into slime mode, it'll turn green. There is an option in software, you can turn this off. You can also turn it off via the menu settings. Um, so yeah, this is, this is gonna go in here. So it will fit 
but we have two problems. One, getting this piece out is a pain in the butt. Uh, the entire center or the, uh, the side tubes and the door need to come off, which means you need to access uh, just behind here. Uh, there's two screws. You'll notice um, when you get in there, they're very hard to get. What you should get is one of these angle adapters. Or if you haven't already, uh, this can be found on Amazon. Uh, it hooks up to basically any standard screwdriver or, or drill. So if you have a screwdriver that accepts uh, different magnetized bits, this will let you get into that tight spot back there and undo the screws and, of course, put them back. So that's... That's one thing um, that I had to do uh, specifically for my proton pack. So with the door removed, I can get access to the power cell. Now the other problem is these are sonically welded or, or melted uh, in place. So what I'll need to do is just break these tabs. These will probably come off real easy. I'll get a small screwdriver and just break off uh, the heads um, of those welds. This thing will come out and I will just friction fit everything in place. And then the cable will just route out uh, the exact same side. And yes, this does, this did come with uh, cables. I believe there is an option that you can solder them on yourself. I would recommend just pay the extra few bucks or pounds uh, for this device with the wires and the connectors. There'll be a JST PH. Yeah, this is the smaller PH and it will attach with a JST-XH to the main board. So yeah, everything's good to go. All I need to do is I'm gonna route, the, uh, route the wires through. And once I get the, um, the old one disconnected, this will be able to slip in there and uh, pop this back in. And that'll be it for the power cell. And through the magic of editing, my pack is reassembled. Sorry, I didn't walk through that. I had quite a bit going on that evening, so it was just easier to proceed with reassembly. So anyways, I have my new Fruto Technology 15 uh, LED power cell is installed, and I have my 28 segment bar graph also installed, so let's go ahead and kick this on. <laughs> right. So first, looking at the bar graph, this is now gonna be auto-detected by the GP Star uh, hardware or more precisely, the software is going to check that if anything is attached to the I2C, the, the additional serial bus that is exposed on the board. So if you do the upgrade from a HasLab 5 LED bar graph, it's gonna automatically uh, detect it now. No need to make any further adjustments to the software. Now, speaking of software, uh, another recent update, if I turn off the light, you'll really see it uh, we have something going on with the power cell. Well, that's because the default is set to 13 LEDs in the, uh, in the software for the HasLab equipment. We also have a problem here. My cyclotron's not spinning all the way around. Again, this is because the default is uh, 12 LEDs for the cyclotron. So how do we fix that? Well, we can do one of two things. We can either go into the software and we can modify some settings and then reflash the boards or new feature just added by Michael. What we can do is power down the wand and the, and the uh, proton pack. And we're gonna go into a new special menu setting which is EEPROM menu. So EEPROM is erasable programmable memory. Uh, it is available on the uh, chips. It's part of the AT Mega chip. You can now change the number of pixels in the uh, cyclotron and in the power cell. So let's just get into that. So you're gonna hold the intensify button and you're gonna to toggle this five times. So one, two, three, four, five. So now we've entered the menu. If I were to just press the intensify button, that would clear the EEPROM, wipe out any settings and exit the menu. If I press this button up here at level five, this will save any settings and then also exit the menu. What we're going to do is we're going to use the dial, just like always. And we're going to go down to level four, and we'll have options to cycle through. 40 cyclotron LEDs. So I just pressed this button. The first option gave me uh, 40 cyclotron LEDs, and I can cycle through preset values uh, for the cyclotron. 20 cyclotron LEDs. 12 cyclotron LEDs. So 12 is the default. That's what the HasLab 
40 is what I have, and that is pretty much the maximum that you could put inside the lid. Uh, the other option is 20, and that is reserved for an upcoming uh, product from Fruto Technology, which is a uh, set of four individual uh, PCBs that will fit in the stock location for the uh, Hasbro LEDs, and will actually give you more LEDs per lens and they'll be RGB enabled. So you'll be able to change the colors uh, for the video game modes, all that. So I've set mine to 40, which is what I've got right here, a 40 pixel ring. All right, if we go down to level three. 15 power cell LEDs. There we go. So now the first option, as soon as I press the button, is to go to 15. 13 power cell LEDs. 15 power cell LEDs. So level three is affecting the power cell count. So your only options are 13 stock or 15, which is the Fruto. Go down to level two. 12 inner cyclotron LEDs. Okay, so inner cyclotron, uh, it's at the 12. 23 inner cyclotron LEDs. 23. 24 inner cyclotron LEDs. <laughs> 24. 35 inner cyclotron LEDs. And 35 is what I have for the inner cyclotron on my particular setup. So basically what Michael did was he took what has been commonly um, cited in our uh, bill of materials as available options that you can put in. So I left mine at 35 because that's what I've got. GRB in the cyclotron LEDs. Okay, so this uh, number one is a very special setting. RGB in the cyclotron LEDs. It only affects the inner cyclotron. So some users had already been recommended a certain type of LEDs to get uh, for the inner cyclotron. And unfortunately, that set was GRB. Um, so basically, it it flips the red and the green color values. You can change and toggle between GRB and RGB mode. So that's it. So I left mine as RGB inner cyclo cyclotron with 35 pixels. I have my outer cyclotron set to 40 pixels and my power cell set to 15. So now we can go back up to the top menu. We'll press the button down here and everything should be saved. So if this works, what we should see is everything working as expected. We've got the power cell going all the way to the top. And so it starts here, uh, one, two, three, et cetera. And then as soon as it finishes here, the next LEDs in sequence are the cyclotron. So that's why I was getting that blip of red at the top because it thought that LED belonged to the cyclotron. Now we've got it working. Now I can show you this. So with the Fruto technology power cell in place, I now have uh, the ability to change colors. And so this is gonna match my mode. So now my video game modes are in sync between the cyclotron and the power cell. This is the overheat mode. So uh, basically pressing the uh, intensify will go into event sequence. So it goes red. Uh, when you're in the settings mode now, Everything goes white, and then press again, you're back into uh, proton mode, and everything's going to be as you would expect. Default is blue, default is red. Since we're talking about defaults, let's go into the menu system, and if we go all the way down into the system, so slow blow gets illuminated, this first element here, as long as we're on number five, this button up here is going to let us toggle some things. Video game colors disabled. So basically, I just disabled the video game colors. So if I exit this menu, power up, okay, you don't see anything right away, but as I cycle through, so I just went into slime mode, you can see my wand is still throwing the right color. This remains red, the cyclotron remains red, and the power cell remains blue. So basically, we turn off the ability for those devices to change colors. Okay, so let's power down, go back into the menu system, go back down to that option. So what else can we do? Well, we can disable, but we can also toggle specific items. So if I press this one more time, video game colors enabled. that just toggled the power cell only 
to have video game colors. If I press it one more time. Cyclotron video game colors enabled. Now we've toggled to only the cyclotron having video game colors. And then lastly, video game colors enabled. Press it one more time. And now video game colors are just enabled and that means both devices. So your options are disable completely. So you'll get the default blue and red on these devices. Only the power cell enabled, only the cyclotron enabled, or both. And there we go. So that's part of the uh, new features that are built in. So you can completely control uh, how these devices work. You can control the setup. And uh, just to show you, if I turn off at the power source, so basically I take away power from uh, the PCBs entirely, that EEPROM is non-volatile memory. So it's going to basically remember and once I start everything up, there we go. Everything's still working exactly as it should. We've got 15, uh, 15 LEDs that remembered uh, for that, uh, 40 for this. And we'll just cycle through because I had turned the video game modes back on. And then just as a sanity check, we can open up, we'll just open up the cyclotron real quick. And there we go. Yeah, still working. Uh, I, I remember I set mine to 35 pixels, which is what that ring is. And as we can see, everything's working just fine. And if I go into my modes, there we go. Again, everything working exactly as it should. Uh, the, the pixel count is correct here and I've got my colors working. So, so that covers uh, the latest changes. So that's what you would do after upgrading some of these devices. So changing out the Paracel LEDs, you now have a menu driven option. You don't have to go into the software. It's still programmer friendly. If you really wanna make the changes uh, in software, you can do that. You don't have to use the menu system, but the idea was making this as consumer friendly as possible for those making upgrades. All right, take care.